Hi, my name is Ed LaCara, and I am a co-owner and clinician at Body Lounge Park Cities. And in a previous video, we talked about all of the COVID antibody tests that we performed this past week. We did about 200 tests, and a lot of people were asking, well, how accurate is the test? And so I wanted to go through a couple terms called specificity and sensitivity in order for us to understand how accurate those tests are compared to other things in the world of their specificity and sensitivity. Kind of like a pregnancy test. You know, if I have a pregnancy test done and it shows up positive, I want to know, well, is that really a sensitive test in order to make sure that I am pregnant? Or is there um, some room for error, meaning could I be a false positive? So I'm going to talk about all those things right now. The easiest way to describe this is to draw a grid. And the two parts of this grid are your tests and the truth. So the truth would be, do they actually have the antibodies or do they not have the antibodies? And then the test is, is it a positive test or is it a negative test? So for each test, we really have four options. They have, they actually have the antibodies and they test positive, which would be a true positive or TP. They don't have the antibodies, but they do test positive. So that would mean that that is a false positive. or FP. In this case, we have a negative test, but they have the antibodies. So that would be a false negative. And in this case, or FN, and in this case, they do not have the antibodies, and it's also a negative test, so it's a true negative, or TN. Now, in a, an ideal situation, we would have a test that never gave us false positives and also never gave us false negatives, but those tests don't exist. So let me show you an example of how we would measure that. So Let's say in our situation we had 200 patients or 200 sample size subjects. A certain percentage of those will have the antibodies and test positive. And if that is, if it is true that for everybody that tested positive had the antibodies, then we would have a about 16 people show up, according to the manufacturer. And the, what the manufacturer, where they get this information is large amounts of data, thousands and thousands and thousands of people that contribute to these accuracy uh, markers. If the true positive is 16, I should have zero false negatives, meaning that I, there, it shouldn't happen. There should be no false test. So this would be zero. In this column, I should not have anybody for a truly accurate test, 100% accuracy, I should not have any false positives. So again, this would be zero. And the true negative would be the 200 minus the 16, or 184. So 
what this test would mean is if this was like an all-knowing test was that I had zero false results and I only had true results. So if I was going to look at the sensitivity, the way that I calculate that is I take everybody that has the, the antibodies and I divide by the total amount of people that tested in this column. So I would go 16 over 16 plus 0, which is equal to 1, multiplied times 100, and that would give me 100% sensitivity. And the way that I remember what sensitivity is measuring is a little acronym Snout, meaning that a very high sensitivity means that a negative result excludes the antibody or excludes what we're looking for. So snout sensitivity has an S and an N in it. A negative test, N for negative, helps me rule this out. And in this case, my sensitivity is 100%. So if you came to me with looking for something, and you tested, and you did not come up positive, I could 100% accurately tell you that you don't have whatever we were looking for, in this case, the antibody. Specificity is going to be taking the numbers in this column. So we would take 184, and then the total number that do not have the antibodies, and then this again is equal to 1 times it by 100, and that would give us 100%. Specificity, a positive specificity, so in this case, we use the acronym SPIN. Specificity, a positive, a positive test helps me rule the whatever we're looking for in. So in this case, 100% specificity would tell me that if the person tested positive for the antibodies, I can 100% tell you that you have antibodies. Okay, there's no false results. So now let's take you through what we actually found. This is the actual number that we found were positives, which was 16 out of the 200. We were told by the manufacturer there is no false positive, so that remained zero. But where we did have some differences is down in this column. So, I had to calculate this out based on the data that the um, manufacturer gave us, and what we found was that we had about 10 false negatives, okay, so 10 people came out of the 200, they tested negative, but they were possibly positive, and then the true negative then would be 174. So, how could we get this data to be a little bit closer to what the manufacturer was uh, telling us would be a larger sample size? Now, in our case, what we asked for were, because we only had 200 tests, we asked for people that had been exposed or they thought that they had been exposed or their family had been exposed, and so they were quarantining with that family, and they had symptoms. So what we would have expected was to have a lot more true positive because it wasn't just the general population. It was people that actually thought that they had come down with the COVID-19 um, flu. So if we were to calculate 
what we actually found compared to what the manufacturer found, we would do something very similar. We would say 16, but I would use 26. So this would be instead of 16 plus 0, this would be 16 plus 10. And then, so this would be 16 divided by 26, and that'll give us one number, and then, and that would be our sensitivity, and then our specificity would be, again, 174 over 174 is equal to 100% specificity. And that's because we know that we were not going to get any false positives. So that, that lines up. But we know that there's a little bit difference in the sensitivity. And I think this number turns out to be something like 0.8667. So I hope that helps with sensitivity and specificity. Um, we're really trying to figure out how valid the test is. And when I talk about validity, it's actually how accurate does the test test for what we're looking for. And um, in this case, they're very, very accurate. One thing I failed to mention is that in most tests, when you have a very, very high specificity, you typically, and I'm saying approach, approaching 100%, you're going to have typically lower sensitivity. And that's just the way these things work. High specificity, low sensitivity, or vice versa. When you have two very high sensitive and specific tests, that's, uh, that's really great. And that's a lot of times why we in the clinic use multiple tests in order to rule something in or rule something out. So I don't just look at an MRI. I look at an MRI and clinical examination and orthopedic testing, and I try to put all the pieces of the puzzle together to give me an accurate diagnosis. If somebody is pregnant, what they may do is they may take a home pregnancy test, which is, you know, 96 or 97 percent accurate. That comes up positive. I know people that will take multiple tests to see if it continues to come up positive to try to rule out any false positives. And then they'll go to their physician to get a more accurate test. Um, I think that's all I got. Specificity, sensitivity. If you have any questions, just ask them down in the comments and I'd be happy to answer. But you can take this scenario and um, try to figure out all different types of tests and um, how accurate or valid they are. Thanks so much.